This is the second lecture on cell pathology and infection by Dr. Neil Cross. And in this session, we're going to be covering cancer diagnosis by histology and cytology, also known as tumor grading. And we're also going to cover tumor staging, which is a, a description of how far the tumor has spread throughout the body. So we're going to look at various tumor grading strategies and naming systems of various tumor staging systems. So after this session, you'll be able to describe numerous histological grading systems for different human cancers and especially where those human cancers have their own specific grading system so we'll cover breast prostate some uh, work on cervical and then we'll also you should be able to describe staging systems um, we'll be covering tnm staging system tumor node metastasis uh, stage one two three four uh, that you will hear and hear about on pathological reports so we'll be covering all of these within this uh, lecture and it means that you should be able to clearly differentiate the difference between grading of tumours and staging of tumours. So when we come to diagnosed tumours, there's often first line of diagnosis and this is often uh, comes through presence of a lump, so a breast lump is fairly uh, typical, uh, prostate digital rectal examination uh, which is feeling for a lump physically on the prostate. Um, so these are identification of some sort of lump or some sort of symptom that uh, either a patient or a clinician will have identified. It could be a suspicious mole or it could be something that is a biochemical change secondary to the cancer. So during this when you've got uh, either liver cancer or secondary liver tumours. Um, so this is the first line of diagnosis that suggests that something might be wrong but just the presence of a lump does not confirm the diagnosis of a cancer. So to follow that up there will be some likely some sort of imaging so mammograms are used to screen for breast cancers and look for any changes. Uh, in prostate cancer we can use transrectal ultrasound to identify regions of the prostate which may be able to be feel lumpy by the clinician and then you can use a transrectal ultrasound to visualize where regions of the prostate may be more dense and that will then guide a clinician to biopsy the most suspicious regions of the prostate. Similarly with mammograms, you can image the tumour, but until you've actually biopsied it and got some tumour cells, you can't be sure whether it is a cancer or not. Uh, other things that can be done, MRI scanners used to identify tumour masses uh, in various sites. We use bone scans quite a lot to look for either primary bone cancers or secondary bone cancers. That's cancers that spread from breast, prostate, uh, myeloma, these tend to uh, affect the bone marrow cavity, so bone scans can be very useful in that regard. But all of this often suggests strongly that there is tumour present, but it doesn't give a confirmed diagnosis, and usually uh, the confirmed diagnosis comes from looking at the tumour cells down the microscope, which we'll call histopathology, and that involves grading of the tumour material. So all of this medical imaging can often give ind indications that there's tumour present. It can also give indication as to the stage if, uh, of the tumour, as in how big it is, how far it has spread, if it is indeed cancer. But the confirmation of diagnosis is very often performed microscopically by looking at a tumour biopsy down the microscope. And that's what we're dealing with in the first part of this lecture, the nomenclature associated with uh, tumour grading. So when we're looking at uh, tumour material, we've got two main... Uh, methods that are used and that's cytology and histology. And cytology is the microscopic evaluation of cells and that's free cells. So we could be looking at a fine needle aspirate of a lump. So it involves putting a needle into that lump and aspirating off some cells using some saline. We could be looking at urine. So taking a, a urine sample and sedimenting the cells out of that. Mucus and sputum samples can be taken. We can look at exfoliated cells and forcibly removed cells, so something like a cervical smear, comes under this heading. So this is where we are taking off surface cells from a potential lesion and looking at those on a microscope slide. So we call that cytology, cyto for cells. So cytology is not to be mixed up with histology and this is microscopic evaluation of tissues. So typically this is from a core biopsy. Uh, so this is where you're putting in um, a biopsy that will take maybe a millimetre diameter core of material which can then be sectioned and looked at down a microscope. Or we could be looking at surgically resected tissue uh, that has been removed at 
at surgery of removal of the uh, tumour itself. The key difference is cytology looks at the morphology of the cells themselves, whereas histology looks at cells in their tissue arrangement within the tissue. And this is really important because um, if you remove cells from a cancer using a fine needle aspirate and do cytology on it, on that, it's difficult to tell whether that is cancerous or not sometimes uh, because you can't see whether the tumour cells have invaded into the connected tissue and that is by definition cancer and we'll come on to that shortly. Uh, certainly cancer for epithelial type cancers. Histology gives you the arrangement of cells within that tissue and when we look at cervical cancer versus cervical cyto cytology versus histology you'll see the clear differences there. So we're going to start with tumour grade and some of this should be familiar to you because we covered this in the cell pathology uh, laboratory in PSD2 um, and you will have access to uh, slides looking at the Nottingham grade. I will briefly cover the Nottingham grade again but I'll cover other grading systems as well. The tumour grade is how differentiated the tumour is. How does it differ compared to the normal cells of origin? And that's what we're describing. So we use terms like well differentiated. So if the if we're looking at something like breast, we know what normal breast epithelium looks like. If the cancer has cells which superficially look similar, it says that the cells are differentiated. So we say that is well differentiated. Poorly differentiated means that they have not the cells are not differentiated like normal breast cells. So we'll call that poorly differentiated. Well differentiated is low grade, poorly differentiated is high grade. And then we have another term called anaplastic, which is complete loss of differentiation. And in anaplastic tumours, um, even the most highly trained pathologist would not be able to tell the difference between a anaplastic prostate and an anaplastic breast cancer purely on morphology, because they, it would just be a mass of highly proliferative cells. Now the different tumour types that we're going to look at often have their own specific grading systems and that's because there are various nuances in prostate and breast and other tumour types that are uniquely look, uh, examined by those pathologists. So prostate cancer cannot be directly compared with breast cancer on a specific numbered grading system. However, you could say that a well differentiated breast cancer uh, you can predict what a well differentiated breast cancer would look like and you can also predict what a well differentiated prostate cancer would look like. They'd superficially look quite similar to the normal tissues but they have their own numbered grading systems that identify key features and uh, all pathologists effectively use the same numbering system and the same language. So no matter what country you're working in, a uh, Gleason grade, some, uh, Gleason sum score of 2 for prostate is the same all over the world. So to complicate things further, um, there are other grading systems which are named um, and the American Joint Commission on Cancer, the AJCC, have a grading system which is just grade 1, 2, 3, 4 which is using those terms that we have just seen. So well differentiated and low grade is grade 1, grade 4 undifferentiated and anaplastic and this sort of generally works. If you said something was grade 1 or grade 4 pathologists would know what that means. However, this is further refined for some specific cancer types like Nottingham uh, grading of uh, breast cancer and the Gleason grading of prostate cancer to give a much more diverse range of possible scores. Um, and that's because there are specific features that go just beyond well differentiated or not. The Nottingham grade we're interested in tubules, uh, we're interested in proliferation rate. In Gleason uh, grading, we're interested in the size of individual ducts, how tightly packed they are, how variable they are. So different groups of pathologists from different specialisms have come up with their own specialist grading systems. However, a very, very high scoring Nottingham grade for breast cancer would be sort of analogous to grade three or grade four you know, of, of high grade, poorly differentiated, whereas a very low grade uh, breast cancer would be also referred to as well differentiated. So these terms are interchangeable in with these various tumour specific grading systems. Now I've seen these images before from um, uh, cell pathology labs last year. This is normal breast. This is showing the uh, connected tissue, uh, which we will call mesenchyme. 
the connective tissue mesenchyme. kind. Um, the dark purple is the epithelial cells and these are uh, breast epithelial ducts. Uh, this region here is uh, zoomed in down here and we can see all of the features. We can see that these are the epithelial cells, this is a duct. Uh, these are secretory epithelial cells and there are two different types of epithelial cells. We've got basal cells and then we've got secretory or luminal epithelial cells. And along here between the mesenchyme, the connective tissue and the epithelium is the basement membrane. Um, <clears throat> and then over here we've got a blood vessel lined with endothelial cells and all of these cells here are uh, fibroblasts, also called stromal cells, maybe called uh, smooth muscle cells or fibromuscular stroma. Various different names for connective tissue cells. Cells that are, lurk around ducts and have contractile activity we tend to refer to as fibromuscular stroma, but I would be happy with these just being called stromal cells or fibroblasts. And then this wavy pink stuff here is collagen. And you'll see that the mesenchyme is very cell sparse, so a few fibroblasts here, lots of collagen in between, whereas the epithelium is very cell dense, which is why it shows up as a much darker purple on most histological sections. So if you're looking at epithelial tissues, dark rings of cells are going to be the epithelium. The pink cell sparse stuff is going to be your connective tissue. So as you covered in your lab um, last year um, or the year before, we look at three key features of, of breast cancer samples. Do they form tubules? Do we have a high mitotic count? Do we have nuclear pleomorphism? That is variation in the nuclei from one cell to another. And we give each of these features a score of one to three, add them up, and we would say that a high grade breast cancer, which is a grade of three, which is, is achieved by getting a score of eight to nine. Intermediate grade, a score of six to seven, and low grade, three to five. So we're using similar terminology to what we've seen earlier. So low grade is synonymous with well differentiated. High grade is synonymous with poorly differentiated. So just to show what these would look like, this is a moderately well differentiated, probably score, you know, sort of five-ish. Uh, and we've got large areas of connective tissue. We've got clear duct formation. So throughout this structure, you've got duct formation. So probably get a score of one for that. Uh, nuclear pleomorphism, I'm squinting at the slides, and there is some variation between cells. Difficult to say exactly whether it's a one or a two. Uh, you'll see better examples of that later. Um, so this is moderately well differentiated. There are far lower grade breast cancers than this, but you've got ducts forming. But crucially, what you have got up here is you can see that the epithelium is mixed in with the connective tissue here. Um, I mean, these ducts don't look normal, they certainly don't look normal, but you can clearly see tumor cells mixing in with the stroma. So that's the concern there, and that your blood vessels are within the stroma. If the epithelial is mixed in with the stroma, there's a chance of spread. So this would be the concern here. So the ducts are forming quite well. However, there are features on there that clearly define it as cancer. And um, however, on the whole scheme of things, this is a relatively good prognosis. In contrast, this is a very poorly differentiated breast cancer. You can see we've just got a mass of epithelial cells. This slightly pinky bit there and pinky bit there might be ribbons of connective tissue. So this is effectively a duct that's absolutely packed full of tumor cells. The tumor cells themselves look very different to each other. So this will score moderate or high on the nuclear pleomorphism scale. So the cells look quite different to each other. Basically, what you have to do is look at one cell and then the cell next door and the cell next door and see how regular they are. Um, can't particularly see mitotic bodies on here, which are proliferative cells, so I can't really comment on that score, but just on the complete absence of tubules and the quite variable nuclei, we know this is going to be a poorly differentiated cancer. This would give a quite poor or very poor prognosis. And this is an anaplastic um, breast cancer and here you've just got a mass of you know, indistinct epithelial-like cells. There's no ductal structure whatsoever. I can clearly see there is a, a mitosis. There's another mitosis. There's probably another one. And individual cells look completely different to each other. 
So we're looking at probably three for nuclear polymorphism. Uh, can't really comment on exactly how many uh, mitotic bodies there are, but there are quite a few. And this certainly is going to score a three for the complete absence of ducts. So this is going to score an eight or a nine on that um, Nottingham score, which basically means this is a very poorly differentiated cancer with a very poor prognosis. So you've covered lots of breast cancer in your second year labs, and I'm not going to dwell on that uh, too much more. What I'm going to focus more on now is prostate cancer. And for this, we use the Gleason sum score or Gleason grading. And this is um, based upon um, work by Gleason, who's a pathologist. And basically, Gleason came up with five distinct patterns of tumor morphology. Uh, and this diagram, it's difficult to see what Gleason was actually getting at at times. Here, this actually represents very small ducts. These are not cells, these are ducts. So when you see very small, regular, tightly packed ducts, that's classed as grade one. And then at grade two, the key feature that is trying to be shown here is slightly more irregular, slightly more spaced ducts. And then at three, you've got sometimes very, very large and a mixture of very large and very small, very irregular ducts. Um, four and five, I actually really do struggle to work out what the hand-drawn image was supposed to represent. So it's probably much better for me to show you some photographic examples of um, grade one to five and then what we do is we add together the two most abundant or prominent morphologies within a section or within a tumor add those together to get a gleason sum score out of 10. so you only get a score of between 2 and 10 because you only use this system if it is cancerous so the lowest possible sum score you can have is 2 which is 1 plus 1 the highest is 5 plus 5 which is 10 and then you can have the most common one is a 3 plus 4 so part of the tumour looks like this, part of the tumour looks like this, and that would be a 7. However, you can get 7 from two different ways. You can have a, a 3 plus 4, a 4 plus 3, a 5 plus 2, and a 5 plus 2. If most of the tumour looks like this, and a bit of the tumour looks like that, that could be a, a 7. Equally, you can have a majority of this and a, and a bit of this, that would be a 7. Or you could have overwhelming majority like this, and then just a little bit like this. So although they all have a Gleason sum score of seven, uh, the, the three plus four would actually give a better prognosis than a four plus three. So it's a quite a strange little quirk of this system, um, but um, this system can also be loosely aligned to the AJCC grade one to four, in that if you've got a, a grade of three or under, you're looking at grade 1 very well differentiated if we're looking at 8 to 10 you're looking at grade f equivalent to grade 4 which is anaplastic or very very poorly differentiated and then a couple of those in the middle the majority of prostate cancers present in this sort of range um, certainly clinical ones but if you start screening for pre-symptomatic people um, you start to pick up a lot of very low grade cancers so this, this slide illustrates what um, these diagrams are supposed to show. So up in the top right hand corner we've got normal prostate. And what you can see with normal prostate, you've got big thick wedges of mesenchyme, connective tissue, and then quite big open ducts lined with epithelial cells. Uh, that's a low power one which is similar to uh, these images here. So you can see big thick wedges, thick wedges of stroma, these ducts with little projections of epithelial cells that's what you would expect to see whereas when you look at pattern one you've got very tight small regular ducts pattern two slightly larger ducts and the other thing to look out for is there's only a single layer of cells there now that's interesting because you'd normally expect to see both basal and luminal cells and the basal cells disappear when we transition from pre-malignant to malignant so that's a key feature to look out for. Pattern three, you've got these big open ducts, quite regular in shape. And then pattern four, pattern five, it all goes to a bit of a mess and a bit of a, a mass of cells. So that's where the patterns one, two, three, four, five come through. And then you add together two uh, patterns to give the uh, Gleason sum score out of 10. 
So I'll just take you through some more examples to illustrate the changes. So here we've got a normal duct and within there there are basal cells on the bottom and there are luminal cells on top and the basal cells sit on the base of the membrane and within them are the stem cells for the entire gland that can regenerate both the basal and the luminal cells. What happens as we transition to cancer is we tend to lose the basal cells uh, because the differentiation has been messed up by gene mutations. This is a prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia and what we tend to do is get cells piling up on top of each other so we get ducts that tend to close up a little bit that are like three, four, five, six cells thick. These may well have basal cells, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, they, but these are, at this point, pre-malignant. So that's prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia, and we'll also call that carcinoma in situ. So from the previous lecture, I asked you to identify carcinoma in situ. Prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia is a carcinoma in situ. Grade one and two, um, these are where we've got these small, very tightly packed ducts, or we've got the larger uh, ducts. Uh, very little stroma in between them. There is stroma there, there is connective tissue, but the ducts are really packed in there. Um, so that's what a, a very, very low grade prostate cancer would look like. So pattern two is shown here in more detail. You can see there's just a single layer of cells, but very, either very small tie or sometimes quite larger individual ducts. Uh, for pattern 3, we tend to get less uniform uh, ducts, slightly different magnification here. Um, again, you can also we can maybe start to see distinct epithelial cells within the connective tissue. Um, so there, there, probably there. And those are probably epithelial cells and those are likely to be epithelial cells as well. The epithelial cells tend to have a much larger nucleus. They seem to be more metabolically active than the connective tissue cells which tend to have a very small condensed nucleus. Uh, but you've got these large irregular shaped uh, ducts um, so that's a typical pattern 3, less uniform glands than pattern 2. And the prognosis is getting worse so these are, are more, much more likely to have spread than these. The other thing about these is that they tend not to progress from pattern 1 to pattern 2 to pattern 3. What they tend to do is present from the outset as a certain Gleason pattern. So we, do, we don't like find, we, we certainly do find that you start off with prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia, but then they seem to then jump from that to either a well differentiated or a poorly differentiated. They don't, as time goes on, as far as we can tell, don't go from pattern one to two to three to four to five. They seem to go from prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia straight to their, you know, whatever pattern they end up as. And we can seem to have prostatic intraepithelial ne neoplasia banged next door to a really aggressive cancer. Now one thing to look out for in these tumour cells is prominent nucleoli. These are these dark spots within the nucleus. You can certainly see them there as well. Nucleoli are uh, a part of the nucleus, particularly where ribosomes end up getting put together. So a very metabolically active cell will have lots of ribosomes and will have very prominent nucleoli whereas a metabolically inactive cell, the nucleolus is often uh, not particularly visible. So it's something that uh, histopathologists really look out for, whether the nucleoli are very prominent or not. So pattern four and pattern five, we've lost the ductal or glandular structure. Here we've completely lost it, which is pattern five. Pattern four, it's pretty much lost. There are, uh, you can see that that is trying to become a glandular structure but basically all the glands are completely filled in with tumour cells. So pattern 5 there's virtually no stroma present and all the tumour cells will effectively be in very close contact with blood vessels. Pattern 4 slightly slightly less so but uh, and also slightly more epithelium, uh, more packed gland, more full glands than you'll see with pattern 3. Now flipping just back to breast cancer to see how they compare. You've just seen what very low grade, moderate and high grade uh, prostate cancer looks like. This is a very, very low grade breast cancer. You can see the intact ducts and glands and the stroma there. Intermediate grade and then very high grade. The very high grade here looks very, very similar to the very high grade of prostate cancer.
and those were both the clusters and a plastic. Now I've talked about grade quite a lot and the reason why we talk about grade so much is it's really important for predicting survival. So this is a uh, capital my survival curve for patients presenting with various Gleason sum scores of prostate cancer. So at diagnosis, obviously everyone's alive, and then as time goes on, patients will die, and you'll find that they are far more likely to die sooner with a Gleason sum score of 8 to 10, which is the uh, very poorly differentiated cancers, whereas the Gleason um, sum score of 4 to 6 patients, well, 50% survival is out there at 16 years. What is not even plotted on this graph is a Gleason sum score of 2 to 3s because they tend to go along here and then very, very small numbers of the patients will die due to their cancer. So this is a problem is that we know that Gleason sum score of 2 to 3 is classed as cancer, but very few people die of it. And uh, many of these cancers are not even treated because we know that in the age of the patient that they diagnose, if you diagnose at 75, and you've got a cancer that is not predicted to kill you in the next 10 years, then most patients would say, well, I'll take my uh, chances with that one and leave it in place. And what we sometimes do with low-grade cancers in older males is to leave them in place and just monitor the patients. And only if that cancer shows signs of rapid growth do we then start doing therapy of either surgery or radiotherapy. Uh, so it's slightly unusual in that it's one of those cancers that are sometimes not even treated if they are low grade in a particularly old patient. However, if a patient presents with uh, a Gleason grade 8 to 10 or a Gleason grade 7, they will be treated with uh, possibly surgery if it's a small localized cancer, but we'll come on to stage later on. Um, radiotherapy, so possibly implants of radio radioactive beads into the prostate. Um, if we think that the cancer has already spread, we would then do a systemic therapy, is typically anti-androgen therapy, and I will talk about that when I talk about tumor stage fairly shortly. So it's a slightly unusual situation, and so even some of these Gleason sum score fours, uh, because the prognosis is quite good, may not receive therapy if they have a very small tumor. Now everything, everything I've been showing you is histology or histopathology. So this is looking at either tissue sections from a surgical resection or tissue sections from a core biopsy. And that's, that is showing us the epithelial cells, the connective tissue cells, and it's showing what the arrangements of cells are. In cytology, or where, we, uh, where we're looking at your cells, we could be looking at fine needle aspirate biopsy, we could be looking at a cervical smear. We're just getting, we're just getting the cells and smearing them on the glass slide and you're not getting that epithelium and connective tissue um, tissue architecture so cytology is sometimes good for screening and then we follow that up with histology for the final diagnosis and if you start to see abnormal looking cells from a fine needle aspirate biopsy or from a smear you would then follow that up with a full thickness uh, tissue biopsy now there'll be a dedicated lecture just to cytology in a few weeks time, uh, but just as a bit of a preamble to it, this is cervical cytology. So this is from a cervical smear with a Papanikolaou stain cervical sample. And the cells of the um, cervix are squamous epithelial cells, very small nucleus, very large cytoplasm, and then the Papanikolaou stain stains up some of the cytokeratins in its various hues of, of orange and red and a bit of greeny yellow as well. So that's normal um, squamous cells. When we move on to a precancerous lesion, you start to see a larger nucleus, sometimes a prominent nucleolus, and a smaller cytoplasm. So this is what a cervical screening uh, by cytology is looking for. And then we move on to a likely, possibly, cancer carcinoma here. We've got large nucleus, very small cytoplasm, very irregular nucleus. So the skill of the cytologist is to tell the difference between this and this. But in, in effect, both are high risk, and this is normal, and these two would require further in investigations. Now, cytology, looking at stuff down the microscope, is a bit of a dying art now for cervical screening, and as you'll learn from some of my lectures and Fran's lectures, 
uh, we now move on to molecular methods to detect the presence of the virus that causes cervical cancer rather than look at cervical cytology as a first way of screening. Now the reason that cervical cytology is not confirm com uh, confirmation of the cancer is because all we are doing is taking some cells off the top of the cervix. Now the cervix in cross-section looks very similar to skin. So this is connective tissue, these are basal cells, these are squamous epithelial cells, there's a proliferative zone here, and these are non-proliferative, uh, very keratin-containing uh, keratin uh, protective cells. And as we transition from normal epithelium, we get to a low-grade intraepithelial neoplasia. This is pre-malignant, and you can see uh, proliferative cells here, rising up to near the surface. There's a little fling of them there. But if we're going to take a cervical smear, we might catch a few of these, but we're going to get mostly normal. So this is low grade, whereas in high grade, you've got a full thickness of highly proliferative, uh, very de differentiated uh, epithelial cells. <clears throat> so the, the morphology of these cells is small cytoplasm, large nucleus, a little bit like the proliferative cells down here. <clears throat> but you should never see those on a cervical smear. So a cervical smear from a normal cervix would take these squamous epithelium, but not see anything like this, whereas in a high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia, you get most of these and none of these. The problem comes with cancer, is with cancer, the, these cells have broken through the basement membrane, gained access to the blood supply, and they're basically growing down into the connective tissue. In pre-malignant, they've not yet done that. So this is definitely pre-malignant. There's no epithelial cells here. This is uh, not obviously cancerous. There are some cells here that look a bit suspicious, um, but we haven't got a plume of cells growing down like here. So although that does look a little bit suspicious, you can see the basement membrane appears to be intact and the uh, epithelial cells seem to be mostly separated from the connective tissue. I mean, this lesion needs dealing with, but this is by definition invasive cancer. Okay, so that summarizes tumor grade. Now, we're talking about cervical tumor grade, uh, histological versus cytological in a later session. Um, so what we've seen from tumor grade is that it's the looking at cells down the microscope, and it's looking to see if, in terms of epithelial cancers, have the epithelial cells broken through a basement membrane and entered the mesenchyme, and by entering the mesenchyme, they can enter the blood vessels. If that has happened, it is by definition invasive cancer. Uh, until that has happened, in this situation and this situation, we have got something that we would say these cells look, look like they could be cancerous, but they've not broken through. So we'll call those carcinoma in situ, or so, you know, with the, um, cervical cancer, it's intraepithelial neoplasia. The prostate, it was prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia. So those are a pre-malignant uh, grade. So they're not fully fledged cancer yet, but if you leave them, they may well be. Okay, so that's it for this session, uh, well, for, for this video. And the next video that will follow straight on will be the uh, tumor staging uh, video.